Yeah, thank you, Jess. So hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our session today on UCAS and personal statements. My name is Paul Lawler. I'm an outreach officer here at the University of Cumbria. So we hope that you enjoy today's session and get something from it. So um, firstly, just a bit about me. As you can probably tell by the accent, I'm not actually from Carlisle or Cumbria. Um, I was originally born in Belfast, but now I live and work in Carlisle. Um, I came to the University of Cumbria in 2015 to study my undergraduate course in primary education with qualified teaching status. The reason why I chose Cumbria was because I worked as a teaching assistant back home in Belfast for a few years. And quite a lot of the teachers within that school actually got their teaching qualification from Cumbria. So I actually knew a bit about the university even before coming for my um, interview date. And then when I came for the interview date, everything that the teachers had said at the school about the university was true. I just knew right away that it was somewhere that I would like to study. And um, now, now I work at the university. So I graduated in 2018 and I spent the past two years um, supporting individuals with their entry into higher education, doing sessions like this, student finance, and organizing some campus visits, um, course taster sessions, and working with the academics and working with individuals of all ages and backgrounds to really um, let them know about what's on offer, not just at our university, but in higher education in general, um, just to let people know that it's a really worthwhile thing to go into and that they're more than capable of it if they're passionate and they're committed to the course that they wanna go into. So there's a little picture of me on my graduation day, which is always a, um, a really great moment for anyone who goes for three or four years or even longer if you go on and do a postgraduate study at university, it, it, it is a really fantastic moment and a great sense of achievement comes over you. So we're looking today at UCAS and personal statements. So first of all, what is UCAS? So UCAS stands for the University and College Admission Service. So it is the go-to place to research HE courses and providers which offer these HE courses. It's a great resource too. They've got information on there about student finance, personal statements, about helping you get into whatever career it is that you're interested in going into and how to go about doing that. They also offer information on further education options. So looking at local FE colleges in and around your area, the options that are on offer there, apprenticeships, conservatoires, if you're interested in an arts um, degree course, and also postgraduate study that I mentioned as well. And plenty, plenty more on the UCAS website. So UCAS is an independent body and they're funded by applicant payments um, for you making your application to UCAS and also from the university's um, competition fees. Um, so that's a small fee which universities will pay to UCAS for the, the different amount of students that actually would come through the, the university through that system. So they're independent, they're impartial and it's a great resource to use. And the service is mostly used to make applications to undergraduate courses. So not only will you find out the information on there about the different courses, about the different universities, and also additional support and guidance, but it's also the platform that you will use to make your application to your five choices um, on your UCAS application. You'll use the UCAS platform to complete that as well. So when you go onto the UCAS website, you'll be met with a homepage such as this. As you can see across the top there, you've got further education, undergraduate, postgraduate, alternative and careers. And you've got a handy search bar there. Through the search tool, you can filter it by location. You can filter it by the course area that you're interested in. And you can go on and find out quite a lot about the different courses and the universities which are offering those courses and also other providers as well. Because as we well know that university HE courses aren't only delivered at universities, but they're also delivered at different um, Different, for different bodies and um, providers as well, such as um, the Open University, online studying, and also through FE colleges as well. So as I mentioned, it's a real, really useful tool. You can go on there, you can find out about the different um, providers offering the course that you're interested in and getting a lot of more information, support and guidance through the UCAS platform. So just in as, a, as an example, you may be someone that's interested in marine and freshwater conservation. You can do a search for marine and freshwater conservation and the University of Cumbria will come up along with other providers that would offer this course option. And you can see the course information page there. Along the bottom, it gives you the type of qualification it is. So you'll be gra graduating with a Bachelor of Science with honors if you complete the marine and freshwater conservation course with us at the University of Cumbria. You'll find out that we offer this at our Ambleside campus in the heart of the Lake District. You'll find out about the start date, 
the study mode and the duration of that course. And it will also give you information on entry requirements, information about what the course entails, what you'll be learning, what you'll be studying, and um, reasons as to why you would maybe want to choose that university and choose that course to study. So as I mentioned previously, you're allowed five choices on your UCAS application. We would normally recommend for people to do quite a lot of self-reflection, quite a lot of research, find out exactly it is what you want to do. For me, for example, I was interested in primary teaching. I knew that that was the course that I wanted to do at university. So I did my research. I found five providers which offered the primary education course, um, found out that they would be um, good options for me to consider and apply to. and. Um, that's something that you would need to do. We would ask you to sort of find um, a course area that you're interested in and find five providers which offer that course. And then you can apply, apply to those because you only get one personal statement, one application for your five choices. So it's really important that the personal statement, which we'll touch on shortly, is geared towards those five choices and that it that it, it covers those. So it's difficult if you're looking at different courses on your application. Um, as opposed to the one subject area. Um, that's not to say that you mightn't apply to the same provider, but um, the different courses might be of a similar area, but different in a sense. So for example, we offer criminology here at the University of Cumbria with a lot of different optional pathways. So it might be that you just apply to one provider, but it's five courses in a similar area and your personal statement will cover that. Um, just a couple of other things um, with your application for UCAS. You can only apply to Oxford or Cambridge, so you can't apply to both on your application. And if you're applying to medicine, dentistry, veterinary medicine, your fifth choice must be in a different subject area. This is because these are quite competitive courses. So UCAS makes sure that people have an additional option um, on, their, on their application as well, as opposed to um, just having five, five subjects of those, those areas. So as I mentioned, it's really important to do your research, making sure that you make the five best choices possible, because obviously there's a lot of options out there. There's a lot of providers and it's really difficult to sort of um, figure out which universities, which providers you want to apply to and which courses you want to apply to unless you do your research. So things like going onto the university websites, getting digital prospectuses at the minute and reading about the courses and finding out about their entry requirements, figuring out whether or not the courses that you're doing at the minute would gear you towards entry into that course and whether or not you're on track to meet the entry requirements for that. Speaking to your teachers at school, um, obviously they can give you advice, guidance as well. And quite regularly, they're planning for guest speakers to come in to talk to you about um, careers, courses, degrees. Um, so they're a really great person to speak to to get some advice and guidance from. And quite regularly, if you are currently at school or college, the person who will provide your reference, which backs up your personal statement, which backs up your UCAS application, is usually a teacher or tutor at your college. They don't always have to be, but they're usually these people. So they're um, a good person to chat to about that. Virtual open days as well. Obviously, at the minute, um, we're not hosting physical open days um, with everything going on at the minute. But don't let this put you off. Um, obviously, attending virtual open days where you'll be able to find out a lot more about the universities, a lot more about the providers, and speak to the academics on that course and speak to the different student services as well and find out exactly the bigger picture of the university, not only just your course area, but also what else is going on throughout the university. Speaking to your friends and family as well, maybe some of them have went into higher education and they can give you some support, guidance and advice. And also they know you as a person, so they'll be able to let you know about what they think you would be good at and what your interests might be. Um, so it's always good to get a second opinion and speak to someone about your ideas and about what you want to do. Obviously, virtual events such as the Hello Future Expo today, where you're able to speak to a lot of different providers and a lot of different um, um, bodies um, in regards to further education and higher education, just to find out more about what, what's on offer in your local area and further afield as well through things like the UCAS First, which you can find out information on, again, on the UCAS website. Speaking to the, the admissions tutors, speaking to the careers tutors and the career service um, at your school or college or um, the wider career service um, in and around um, your area as well. And attending academic masterclasses, subject tasters are a great way of having something to add to your personal statement and also to give you an insight and do some research into the courses and the subjects on offer at the universities that you might be considering. So UCAS points and important dates. 
So as I mentioned, on the UCAS website, on the university's course pages, you'll be able to find the entry requirements for different courses. Quite often now, a lot of HE providers would go off UCAS points. So UCAS points is based on the qualification, the level three qualification that you're currently completing. Different grades will equate the different amount of points. And there's a really handy tool called the UCAS tariff calculator, which we'll look at on the next slide. But it's always important that there may be additional requirements other than just the level three requirements, such as A-levels, access to HE diplomas, Scottish hires, um, and BTEC level three national diplomas. Um, there may be other additional requirements such as GCSEs and such. So for example, primary teaching, they needed so many UCAS points for me, but aside from that, they also needed GCSEs in English, math, science at a grade C or above and also five GCSEs at a past grade to show that you've got a wide um, spectrum of knowledge for all areas of the curriculum. So obviously it's really important to look at the additional requirements as well. Check out the university's website and check out the UCAS course pages for additional information on that. So as I said, each level three qualification is attributed to UCAS points. So it doesn't really matter about the subjects, it's more about the qualification that you're gaining and different qualifications and grades are worth different amounts of points. So Googling UCAS tariff calculator, checking out that useful resource, putting in your current studies, your current qualifications that you've completed or currently completing to get an idea of how many UCAS points you've got or you're set to get in the next year or so to help with your application to university. So as I said, the subjects aren't important as to a, sub, a, a, a C in geography would be the same UCAS points as a C in maths for A-level. But obviously looking at those additional requirements because for some degrees, they will need um, specific level three qualifications. For example, if you're looking at a science related degree, they'll need you to have a level three in applied science, um, BTEC national extended diploma or an A-level related to different areas of science. Um, so as I said, it's really important to look at those additional entry requirements as well. So some important dates for your application timeline. Um, the 8th of September this year was when the 2021 entry applications could begin to be submitted. So that's when the window opened. Then on the 15th of October last month at 6 p.m., um, it was the deadline for Oxford, Cambridge, and most courses in medicine, veterinary medicine, and dentistry. And that, again, is because these are quite, quite um, competitive, highly sought after course areas, and obviously um, quite prestigious HE providers as well. Then on the 15th of January, um, just after the new year um, in 2021 at 6 p.m., it's the application deadline for all other UG courses. This isn't to say that if you haven't got your application in by this point and you decide later on down the line before um, the courses start in September that you maybe want to consider a plan to university, you can still do this. But um, for your application to be sort of um, treated on the same they have an equal footing really. It's best to get your application in before that 15th of January deadline, because obviously some courses will be more popular than others and places will be quickly filled at different universities at different courses and different providers. So we always say, try and get your application in before the 15th of January, which I'm sure your schools and colleges are promoting at the minute. But also um, if you decide later on, Obviously, things like clearing in the summer when you do get your qualifications, you might have a change of heart. And this isn't to say that you're too late. You could still apply to start university or to start your HE study that next month in September. Um, but we always do try and push people to have their application in before that deadline. And some schools and colleges will have mock deadlines as well, just so that they can look over your personal statement, give you feedback, and also to um, add in your um, reference from your reference provider to back up what you've said in your personal statement and application. Then on the 30th of June at 6 p.m., applications received after the 30th of June are entered into clearing. So making an application, how to go about making an application. So the cost to apply is £20 for a single choice. So applying just the one um, course at one institution, it would cost £20. But obviously, if you really want to hedge your bets and um, not put all your eggs in one basket, which we always recommend just to have backup options because you don't know what could happen. And also there may, there, there quite likely is a lot of um, really good providers for the course area that you're interested in. And it's only another five pound to get an extra four choices on your UCAS application. So we would always recommend to try and get that in um, 
trying trying to go for that option as opposed to just having your one single choice on your application. So your UCAS applications are usually completed with the support of your school and college, as I mentioned. It'll ask for information on you, your ethnic origin, your occupational um, background, your parents' education, et cetera, and includes your various qualifications from GCSEs upwards, um, and it's supported by your personal statement. So with the application, that's a lot of information about you, and then the personal statement is where you really let the university know who you are, what you're about, why you're applying to this certain course, and give them a reason why they should choose you as opposed to other people that are applying for the same course who may have similar qualifications as yourself. So some top tips for the application, use a sensible email address um, because you wanna make a really good first impression. So making sure that it is a professional email address on your application um, is a small thing, but it can go a long way. Double check all your personal information because the last thing you want is to be given something that's wrong and then having to go through um, the, the, the process of correcting that. Obviously, if you do move house um, during the time of your application changing um, from submitting your application and then moving or during the course of that, you can change that on your personal, informa your personal information at a later date. Input all your qualifications and try to keep your certificates in a safe place where you're easily able to get those because if your course um, is needing an interview, um, on your interview date, the admissions teams at the different providers will quite normally ask you to bring along those certificates as evidence and send off your any required forms and supporting documents as soon as you can to quicken up the process and make sure that there isn't any delay in your application being processed. So personal statements. So the personal statement is part of your UCAS application, as I mentioned. You can write up to 4,000 characters and it's written by you, all about you. So 4,000 characters are 47 lines, which is about an A4 page of information about you, why you wanna apply for the course, so on and so forth. It's your opportunity to really sell yourself to the admissions shooters because on your application at the minute, all they've got is information on you, your address, your predicted grades, your um, current qualifications that you already have, but that doesn't really give them any insight into who you are as a person. So obviously um, it's a real great opportunity to let them know about your passion, your commitment, and ultimately why you wanna go about a plan and take part in this degree course. Include all your skills, experiences, and interests. And it helps the universities, as I said, to select their students using something other than just grades. And it can be stressful. So that's why attending a session like this today where you're gonna get some useful tips and guidance is really useful. And why we always recommend that you spend quite a bit of time on the personal statement, not in one sitting, but coming away from it, going back to it can really help you get the best personal statement possible. So what to include? So thinking about why they should choose you, what are your passions, what are, you, what, what are your interests in the course, what makes you wanna apply for this degree area? What skills and achievements do you already have, whether they're academic or personal? Are you part of a sports team? Have you got an award um, at your school or college at the minute for things that you've been getting up to, um, such as volunteering or pieces of work that you've completed? Thinking again about your ambitions and motivation, why you want to apply for that course and ultimately what you're hoping to achieve during the course of your studies. And also when you do graduate and finish the course, what you're going to go on to and what you hope to achieve. Thinking about your life and work experience, because obviously they exhibit transferable skills, which are vitally important for when you are studying at university or at HE um, through different providers. Thinking about transferable skills, such as time management, um, problem solving, working in a team. All these can be exemplified through a part-time job or through being part of a sports team or other, other things that you've got going on in your life. And again, speaking about your hobbies and interests as well, because they wanna get a full picture of you as an individual to help them with their choice. So the statement should demonstrate your strong, strongest skills and personality, link your strengths to the course. So looking at what areas you'll be learning about, what that course um, ultimately leads to. Is it a vocational course, which leads to a set job? And if so, what strengths have you already got, which links to that area and what experiences you've already got linking to the course that you're applying for? So like I said, hobbies and interests, sport and leisure activities you get up to, part-time jobs you might be involved in, musical instruments that you might play, T 
teams, clubs and societies, and also languages that you speak and prizes and achievements that you've gained. So how to start? First of all, you want to get as many words down on a piece of paper as possible. You might want to do some brainstorming, jotting them all down, gathering your ideas, discussing with your friends, family and members um, or teachers, um, and really jotting it down, as you can see in the picture on the top right there, thinking about your personal statement, hobbies, qualifications, interests, um, work experience, and then just getting as many words down on the piece of paper as possible, and then gathering those together and constructing them into a really sound piece of writing. And also you might wanna go for headings such as course area, lists on bullet points, life and work experience, ambition and motivation, skills and achievements, hobbies and interests, and you might want to do this for a virtual device such as a laptop, an iPad, and use it on Microsoft Word where you can add in different notes and really build that up together. It's scary. You're sitting there, there's a blank sheet of paper, it's in front of you. You've got to fill it up. You've got to talk about yourself. You've got to talk about your interest in the course. But what do you put? This is your future. It's scary. Well, nobody knows you better than you know yourself. You have the opportunity now to show why you're so much better than everybody else applying for your course. So you've got to start thinking about what makes you stand out, but stand out in a good way. I'm Jane Marshall. I work for a university. I spend my life reading personal statements. I read lots of them and I mean lots. That means I know what makes a good personal statement and what makes a bad personal statement. But you have to remember everybody's unique. There are lots of different ways of going about it. So this should get you well on the way to writing an excellent personal statement. So where do you start? Well, the first thing you need to do is start getting words down on that blank sheet of paper. Loads of them. Whatever you can think of. Why are you so excited about the course you're applying for? What is it that gets you really excited about that particular course? What floats your boat? Be excited. Be positive. Don't be negative. Don't say something like, I've always wanted to be a dentist because it's so much easier than being a doctor. Because that isn't positive. Focus on the positives. Tell us how you got excited about this particular course. Uh, did you read an article about something? Did it get you inspired? Did you then go and see a lecture from somebody that made you think, wow, I'm so excited, I'm going to write a project on that. That's the sort of thing we're looking for. And you can get all of this evidence from work experience, outside reading, all the sorts of things you do that back up your interest in the course. So throw those examples at the page. Get excited. Once you've got the stuff down about the course, then you've got to start thinking about the skills you've got that would help you cope with that particular course. Transferable skills, stuff like communication, essay writing, leadership, that sort of thing. And you've got to start throwing more words at the page until something sticks. If you're getting stuck, ask your friends and family. They might be able to come up with some ideas. Occasionally they don't. Avoid saying things like, I know I can be an excellent teacher because my friends tell me I'm really good at telling people what to do all the time. Because think about what that's saying about you. Then think about what's exciting about you, what makes you unique. Think of what you do that's interesting, what makes you stand out. And remember, you may not think it's interesting, but somebody else will. You might like gaming, you might like gardening, you might like train spotting. So will somebody else. So get something like that down on paper as well. So, what do you do next? You've got this big sheet of paper with all of these words on it and you've got to get it into something resembling a personal statement. That means you've got to squash it, you've got to condense it. So you need to start off with a really punchy opening paragraph. This is the bit where you tell us how incredibly excited you are about the course you're applying for and that you really understand what it is you're getting yourself into. Then you move on to the middle paragraph. That's the chunky bit. That's full of all the evidence you're going to need to prove your interest in the particular course. You're also going to sprinkle in some of the bits about your skills and good quality so we know you can actually do it. But that's your middle paragraph. And then you move on to the end bit and that's the bit about the personal touch. This is the bit where you tell us you are unique. You tell us about the things you're interested in that will help you fit into university life as a whole. So, what do you avoid? Well, the first thing is verbal diarrhoea. You've got to keep focused. You haven't got enough space to go off piece, so make sure you're being relevant about the course you're applying for. That's really important. Other things to avoid. Showing off. Don't be arrogant. It's absolutely fine to back yourself up using lots of relevant examples. That's called good showing off. But don't be bad showing off. That is arrogance. Avoid flowery language. Keep it to plain English. We need to understand what you're actually trying to say, so avoid the honour and the privilege of a particular work experience. Just focus on plain English. Avoid clichés. I don't want to see anybody saying, I've wanted to be a doctor ever since I was born. Because you haven't. That's rubbish. Keep it to actual, normal, plain English. Copying. Don't copy. 
they have some software called Copy Catch. It will catch you if you copy somebody else's work. So they're the things you need to avoid. So just to recap, this personal statement, you've got to show us that you know what you've applied for. You've got to show us how excited you are. You've got to give us examples. Make sure it's a combination though of head and heart. Be authentic, be focused, but be enthusiastic. That's what we're looking for. You're not going to get it right on the first go, but keep coming back to it. You'll get it right in the end. And eventually you'll have a fantastic personal statement that tells us all about you. Okay, um, I realize I'm running a bit short on time. Um, that was a really useful video um, by UCAS. Like I said, they've got really great resources on their website that you might want to check out. Also on the University of Cumbria Proof, we've got a personal statement um, um, resource, which helps you with the layout and guidance, which is similar to what you see on the screen at the minute, which um, Jane in the video discussed. Obviously a punchy opening paragraph, the chunky bit in the middle, and then a memorable closing comment. So a little advice, read examples, but do not plagiarize. As it was said in the video, they've got software that will catch this. Um, and obviously no one knows you better than yourself. So there's really isn't a point in copying, but it's good to read examples just to really get your mind going and really spark some ideas. Write it in a Word document. This will help you save multiple drafts, checking it, saving it, amending it, um, and also strong and open and closing sentences, using a sensible email, as we mentioned, and trying to stay away from flowery language, avoiding jokes, quotes, and humor. After you've submitted your personal statement, your school and college, as I mentioned, will attach a reference to go alongside this. It will go to UCAS. UCAS will distribute your applications to all the choices which you've put down on your application. These will arrive at the university, which the admissions team will make a decision on your application. They may invite you to, for an interview if your course um, requires this as part of the application process, and the decision will be made and you will be notified through the UCAS website. Um, some people will get um, conditional offers, off, conditional offers, sorry, which are based on you achieving the grades which you've set out in your, in your um, application, your predicted grades, or it may be that you've already achieved the grades needed and um, are perfect for the course already, and they will give you an unconditional offer. So um, I know um, we're a bit short on time, Jess, but just wondering if there is any questions okay. that I can... I've just been keeping an eye on the Q&A box, and I think we're clear for questions at the moment. Okay. Um, but what we can do is uh, Paul and the team at the University of Cumbria are available yeah. over in the exhibit hall. So if you click exhibit hall, find the University of Cumbria booth, and that's where you can pick up the resources that Paul's mentioned today, um, such as the guide on personal statements and support for that. And also you can click chat where you can chat to any member of the team there. And so you can ask any questions that you might have about UCAS and the personal statement process. So I guess I'll sort of use this sort of final couple of seconds to thank you so much, Paul, um, for you. presenting today and everyone for attending. As mentioned, do go chat to them. Um, and also in your expo bag is a guide on applying to higher education. So that includes the UCAS process and everything. So you've got plenty to support you. And maybe now's a great opportunity to start um, asking some questions to different providers um, that will help you build your personal statement in the future. So. Great. Thanks again, everyone, for attending. Uh, take care now. All right. Thank you, Jess. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.